Hi, welcome to Wikimania 2022, the session on writing women into wiki history experiences and best practices. I'm Andrew Lee, and we will be talking about the efforts uh, in the past year to increase the representation of women in Wikimedia projects through three different types of efforts. One is through a GLAM institution at the Smithsonian, one is through the Wiki Women in Red Initiative, and one is with Wikidonna, an affiliate that works in Italian. So first I want to hand it off to Effie Kepsalis from the Smithsonian. Hello, everyone. I am really uh, pleased to be able to share this with you despite the technical problems we had. Um, I am the digital strategist for the upcoming Smithsonian American Women's History Museum. This effort started off as the American Women's History Initiative, um, but in about a decade, we're gonna have a building um, for people to come to as well. But we have a, a virtual museum to build right now. And some of the really critical issues that I'm facing are finding women across our 21 museums, our interdisciplinary libraries and our archives. One of the um, uh, first reports that we received when Congress approved for this initiative to move forward, examined US K-12 education standards. And there is a woman problem there. Um, this report went into detail examining state standards across the US and found that because of the way we frame history, women's stories are completely absent. We focus on wars, we focus on politics, and guess what? Women haven't been there for many years, um, even though they have been there and they have been contributing, they're just not in the official record. So this is really critical for women of color. Um, white women are there, but right now in these state standards, there are zero women from Asian Pacific Islander identity backgrounds. There are reasons, real reasons, and there are people in our sector who are really trying hard to address this, but we don't have the resources to enhance our data. We just don't. So the Smithsonian was founded in 1846. Um, what was notable to be collected has changed drastically <laughs> throughout that history. Um, we've also had no female leader of the Smithsonian in its entire history. We have the first African-American man, uh, Lonnie Bunch, who's leading our organization and doing an incredible job. But when there are women at the head of organizations, they do the work and align the priorities with trying to make conditions better for women who work in the institution to have the say in what is prioritized. The Smithsonian collections in and of themselves are not structured to find women out of our 55 million collection items, which I think is the latest number, but don't quote me on that. You know, we can't digitize everything. It's, it's an endless task and nor can we create data for everything. We're actually kind of behind because that's the hard part of digitization. And, and finally, um, we don't have metadata standards for gender. They just don't exist. However, these are being modeled elsewhere in linked open data, and we can start to do that through Wikidata. Let's do that. So I'm just gonna tell you overall, my mission, I'm in the Office of Digital Transformation now, is to transform an old institution to be more digitally relevant. My stated mandate is to be in every classroom and household to help people navigate all the challenges we're facing, which we're contributing to the technical issues we have today. The American Women's History Initiative mission is that in order to create a more just and equitable American society, where the role of women in history is well-known, accurate, acknowledged, and empowering for citizens. And this is a hard, hard task to do in an old institution of which there are many old cultural institutions in the world. So some of the work we're gonna be doing is to try and bring together the efforts of the cultural sector. And I am so thrilled there are other people doing this incredible work, Rosie and Camelia, and that Andrew Lee and Kelly Doyle are helping us at the Smithsonian to do this. Great, thanks Effie, great scene setting there. Uh, as 
Effie said, Kelly Doyle is the Open Knowledge Coordinator at the Smithsonian and has worked with the Wiki community for many years. I am the Wikimedian at large at the Smithsonian. And during the time that we've been working, we have been very lucky to work with efforts such as those done by Rosie Stevenson Goodnight that you'll hear about later, about moving the needle to actually going from 15 to 19% roughly on the number of women's biographies in English Wikipedia. Um, on our side, we've been trying to contribute digital assets and edit-a-thons and the expertise of curators and researchers at the Smithsonian to increase this number. Um, so since 2019, we've added more than 480,000 words about American women to the collections on Wikipedia through edit-a-thons and other efforts. And the images that the American Women's History Initiative has helped upload and contribute to the Wikimedia Project, especially Commons, uh, has more than 25 million views. And what I think is more astonishing is that we now have a summer internship where we have dedicated Wiki interns at the Smithsonian and we train them. This has been kind of a dream of ours is to actually train interns um, at the beginning of the summer on Wikipedia, editing wiki data, commons, all these things, and having very productive uh, wiki con contributions throughout the summer. Uh, so we've been very successful in that. And even the interns that are not wiki specific, we're giving basic wiki training to, to appreciate um, how uh, Wikipedia helps further the mission of the Smithsonian in disseminating digital content. And these are just a sample of the images that we have with uploaded to commons and have put into the ecosystem of the Wikimedia projects there. And then finally, one of the things that we are working hard on is creating lists to help identify gaps in the coverage of women scientists, especially through a project called the Funk List. And this is something that Effie's been instrumental in helping us further in creating a specific staff position for working with these women scientist lists. So I thought I'd hand it over to Camelia uh, talk about some of the efforts that you have in Italian language, Emilia. Yes, uh, thank you, thank you, Andrew. So I'm uh, I'm Camelia Bovan. I'm uh, the co-founder of the affiliate uh, Wikidona User Group, and uh, on uh, August four in twenty sixteen, I created uh, the project Wikidona in Italian Wikipedia, which was was almost a need. <laughs> Uh, because in that moment, uh, the female biographies was, uh, were at 14% uh, uh, of all biographies. Uh, uh, so we started by create, creating uh, female biographies, being active during the discussions uh, on the deleting procedures and uh, talking about uh, creation of uh, women categories uh, by profession. Uh, we work, uh, um, we are working on almost, uh, most of all on uh, Wikipedia, uh, where we wrote about uh, uh, women, LGBT plus communities, uh, different uh, able personalities, uh, uh, para-athletes, uh, emarginate people and communities. Uh, and uh, we are also organized in the extra curricular project in schools and courses for professors. Uh, uh, we are also the local organizer of campaigns, international campaigns like Art and Feminism, Wiki Gap, uh, Wiki Love Folklore, CE, Woman, and other, but also uh, we uh, ideated uh, new campaigns like uh, Inter Wiki Woman Collaboration, which is a, a recurring event since Wikimedia 2017. Uh, in Montreal uh, that runs uh, these uh, these days because uh, it's uh, started during the Wikimania and is connected to Wikimania. So please uh, uh, join the the campaign. Uh, we also ideated uh, Wiki Love Fashion, Wiki Love Sports, uh, and Wiki uh, Women in Climate Change. Uh, we are uh, also uh, active in uh, Wikiquote, Wikibooks, Commons, Wikidata, and uh, OpenStreetMap. Uh, in Wikibooks, we started a series uh, called um, Profili di Donne, which means uh, women profiles from some part of Italy, and uh, Lucania, Veneto, Puglia, and so on. And uh, we are uh, collaborating with school for all, all of those uh, biographies uh, 
that are notable but only locally so it cannot be uh, written in uh, wikipedia uh, we always wrote female biographies in uh, wiki quote but uh, we uh, with the collaboration of a wiki woman in red for the she said the campaign we increased uh, impressively the, the amount of articles written in uh, wiki quote we uh, arrived the last year to uh, near a thousand of uh, articles, uh, new articles, or increased in two months, uh, which was the best uh, result of this campaign. Uh, we gave a, a good, a wonderful support, I can say, uh, by illustrating the times we are living in. Uh, uh, we uh, we helped to uh, upload and release with uh, Creative Commons licenses uh, uh, many featured uh, COVID images in Commons, and uh, uh, three of them were on the top five of uh, the picture of the year in 2020. Uh, we are organizing uh, women trackings uh, on the footsteps of notable female uh, personalities, and we started a collaboration with the Cosmopolitan Group, which is a fam female mappers on uh, OpenStreetMap, to map together centers that are fighting the female uh, genital mutilation in uh, Africa. Uh, what I want to say is that we are present in all the social channel platforms uh, from uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, uh, Telegram, Slack, even TikTok and Twitch. <laughs> Which, uh, hoping to increase the interest because uh, this is one of the problems we, we have. Participation is one of the problems uh, maybe in many of our the communities have so being present and do the things thank you great thank you so much uh rosie thought maybe you could talk to us about women in red oh thanks so very much for that um andrew and camelia and effie so i'd like to say a big welcome to the people who are listening to our presentation and I would like to introduce you, if you don't know about us, a community called Women in Red. I'm one of the co-founders of that. Women in Red is a community of editors of all genders. We live around the world and we focus on reducing systemic representation bias in the Wiki movement. Women in Red was established in 2015, seven years ago at Wikimania, Mexico City. So for us, this is our anniversary, it's a holiday. Our community strives to increase the representation of women on Wikipedia and elsewhere. And this includes new women's biographies, but also articles about women's works, such as the paintings they painted, the sculptures they sculpted, the schools they founded, the conferences they convened. This also includes new articles about women's issues, Think things like women's health, women's suffrage, and so forth. What led us to establishing this community is that we read an academic paper published in December 2014 that was the first time that we saw a statistic, and that was this, that in October 2014, based on the DBpedia dump, only 15.53% of English Wikipedia's biographies were about women. Not impressive. But now, thanks to the efforts of the global community, as of August 2022, the percentage is up to 19.3%. What that means roughly is that out of the 1,897,000 plus biographies on English Wikipedia, about 366,000 of them are about women. Since we began our work around the world, more than 189,000 new articles have been created by people just like you and me, and your next door neighbor and my next door neighbor. 
I've been talking about English Wikipedia, but Women in Red exists in 31 other language Wikipedias, each with the same mission, each carrying its own statistics or metrics on how it evaluates its improving of the women's representation on Wikipedia. We coordinate our work on our talk page, where more than 27,000 general forum comments have been made by more than 1,000 unique editors, maybe you. On Wiki, the Women in Red main page has had more than 18,000 page views in the last 30 days alone. Our talk page has had more than 3,000 page views in the last 30 days alone. Women in Red is a harassment-free zone on Wikipedia, and you're welcome to drop by and chat about women's representation on Wikipedia. Women in Red facilitates about five events each month. Each event is at least a month long, but some last a few months and others for a year or even longer. Most of our events are online and without a partner institution. It's people participating anywhere and everywhere in the world. Day or night, women in climate, pride women, women in STEM, women in the ancient world, women in sports, Black History Month women, indigenous women, and so forth. We have events that someone somewhere would like to participate in. And again, we hope that that might be you. We do enjoy working with partner institutions. Our current collaboration with Care International is a big hit. Content gender gap goes beyond quantity of articles, but also to the systemic asymmetry in the way that three dimensions of analysis favor one gender over the other. That would be metadata, language, and network structure. In this regard, Women in Red offers a series of essays aimed at editors who are new to writing about women's representation. Our essays are based on our experience and also learnings from the research conducted by others. But how do we know who's missing from Wikipedia? Every community has its own practices. And when we work with a partner, the partner helps by providing more and more new names, women who are notable but missing. At Women in Red, we capture those names by creating what we call red lists. These are lists of red-linked women, meaning they don't have an article on Wikipedia. We have more than 800 of these lists. Some are generated by bot using Wikidata. Others are crowdsourced. Others come from biographical dictionaries or based on authority control numbers or from websites, such as those websites that focus on award winners. Women in Red is also a Wikimedia Commons community. Every year, our members upload thousands of images of women, their signatures, their marks, their works to Wikimedia Commons. And then these images can be added to Wikipedia articles. This is a significant part of our work. And to some extent, different people focus on uploading images versus writing Wikipedia articles. In 2022, our members have uploaded to Wikimedia Common more than 6,000 images regarding women and their works. Just like different people like to edit Wikipedia or upload images to Wikimedia Commons or do Wikidata work, some women in red people prefer focusing on promotion of our work. By that, I mean mostly social media. Our heaviest use platform is Twitter, where we've made more than 29,000 tweets and have more than 11,000 followers. I think some people are reading Wikipedia just by scanning our tweets about the biographies we've created and then maybe clicking a link or two, maybe. Women in Red also has a significant presence on Pinterest, as well as Instagram and Facebook. So far, we're not on TikTok or Snapchat, 
And at some point, we probably will, because that's how some people are accessing information. There's also a case for accessing content via virtual assistants like Siri and Alexa. So what we're trying to do is reach people in the places where they want to hang out in order for them to learn more about women in Wikipedia. Did you know that 24% of Wikipedia readers identify as women? According to Wikimedia Foundation research characterizing Wikipedia research behavior, demographics, and Wikipedia use cases. This is based on a 2019 study on English Wikipedia, where 70% of the respondents were under the age of 30, and 76% of the readers identified as men. Few women readers, few women editors, not so much representation of women in the content on Wikipedia. Where do we go from here? We need you. We need you to come and join us in this work. And with that, we say thank you. Thank you to all of you who are viewing this and learning a little bit more about the work we're doing, writing women into wiki history, experiences, and best practices. We've covered a lot. Hope you've learned something. Feel free to reach out to any of us to learn a little bit more. Thank you so much again for your time. Thank you, Rosie, and thank you, everyone. We have a few minutes for some discussion around the content, and it looks like we have some very similar themes. Camelia, maybe I can ask you first. What you said to move from you started with fourteen percent roughly for women's biographies in Wikidane, right? Would, did you imagine we could make it to where we are now? Like. And also for Rosie, when we get to you, went from 15% to 19%. What is your reflection on, on where we are now and what we have to do in the of us? So, Andrew, we started with uh, 14%. We are now uh, um, around 16 and uh, 5%, some, something like this, which seems not so, so uh not so much because it's only two percent of uh, of moving. But if you think uh, in Italian Wikipedia, we have uh, one million and uh, uh, eight thousand articles, and I don't know really specifically how how many biographies. There are a lot. If you think of Wiki Wiki of uh, women in red, they moved five points. Uh, but Wikipedia in English has eight million articles, eight million and, and much more. So Rosie talk about uh, 3,000 and something of biographies written during these uh, years, which is a lot, which is a lot thinking that we usually have, uh, let's say, uh, two, uh, 10 people who participate in our events uh, or if we we are doing the contest and we uh, we can uh, uh, I don't know engage other people let's say maximum 20 30 uh, people during an event it's a lot of of work behind it's not easy <laughs> so it's not so uh, uh, it's not a few as can, can be seen from outside. Right. That's a great point. And how about you, Rosie, when you see the 19% number in 2022, looking back up to the beginnings of the project, what are your thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm grateful to see that we've done what we wanted to do, which is move the needle. You know, when we started out, we never set a goal. We never said 20%, 25, 33, 49, 50, 51. There is no end goal. The goal is just to improve upon the numbers that we started with, which the first number we ever saw was something like 14.5, 15.5%. And we knew that there were more notable women than that. We knew that, that there could be an increase if we just devote ourselves to it. You know, this is, we're not the first to kind of start this kind of work. Preceding Women in Red, there were other wiki projects, women, wiki project women scientists, wiki project women artists, uh, wiki project women writers, wiki project women's history. These all preceded us, but they all had very 
um, finite scopes that focused on artists or scientists or writers. Women in Red focuses on any woman of any time period, anywhere in the world. If she's notable, she's missing this article. Let's write it in any language that you feel comfortable writing in, which means we also do a lot of translations in all different languages, English to Italian, Italian to English, and so forth. So I think we've accomplished what we set out to do, which was improvement, but the job isn't done. We can improve more. So looking forward to how this conversation will go at next Wikimania, when hopefully there will be even more articles that we can talk about. In some way, these projects are connected with Wikimania because also uh, Wikidona started uh, a month after Wikimania because I saw your talk during Wikimania in Esinolario. So uh, Wikimania gave uh, starting points to these uh, kind of uh, uh, projects. Yeah, I think it definitely shows the value of these face-to-face -face meetups to, to spark these types of things. Effie, what are your thoughts? I, I just, uh, you know, am noting the commonality in our shared experiences. I was inspired by Wiki Women in Red. I started um, working with the Wikimedia DC chapter, and I'm lucky because in the U.S. we don't have a lot of localized chapters, but they approached the Smithsonian Library of Congress, National Archives, so the big U.S. ones to, to try and get us to work with them. And, um, you know, I jumped on board because I, I knew that we're public institutions that need to um, share our resources. They are for the public good of the United States. So that's why we adopted Smithsonian Open Access. But when I released Smithsonian Open Access right before the pandemic, I knew the vast gaps in representation for people from American Indian communities, for people from Black American communities, for Latino American and women's history. These are two new museums, Latino American and American women history. And we have 55 million collections and we can't find the women. So, I work at the largest museum and education complex, which has relatively better resources than other institutions. Now that doesn't mean that we have the resources currently to do that, but I think we can make a compelling funding case for starting to figure out the infrastructure that we need to share our things more at scale. And that is exactly why we brought Andrew for Smithsonian Open Access um, and why I need partners like the ones in the room because it's not a Smithsonian only problem. We've got to work across so many data sets to pull out women. We also have to address the tools that sideline women. We use artificial intelligence and data science at the Smithsonian to describe collections because we don't have the man power or the woman power. Actually, it's more women power in this case. We have more women doing this work that's less paid than a lot of other roles. So how do we help them? How do we help them keep up with the backlog, but also do the work they really are skilled at to develop these standards that would help these communities be more seen in our cultural heritage. These are people's memories. People need to see themselves in cultural heritage. If we don't do that, we're causing harm. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a great point, Effie. And, and something that um, I think we, we sense, but maybe we only got numbers about recently is we saw that the readership of Wikipedia also has a gender imbalance, right, Rosie? And that was kind of astonishing, at least to me. Uh, we kind of assume that, oh, everyone uses Wikipedia and we all kind of find it useful. We need to increase the number of women's biographies or participation. When you start to look at the readership numbers, it's also askew much more male than, than uh, female. And that's worrying because that means that we're not finding 
content that's resonating with women, perhaps in Wikipedia as well. What are your thoughts on that, Rosie? When you saw that that readership number, I was surprised. I have to say, I was surprised. I thought that that number would be balanced, um, which just goes to show that if you if you if you don't have access to this kind of information, you really don't know. But once you do, you should share that. Should let people know. The only question I really have about that, though, is that, you know, are women accessing Wikipedia in different ways? And by that, I mean, just like I said, you know, if you if you write on a, on a social media platform, let's say Twitter or Instagram, you, you, you put a photo of a woman and you put a little bit about a Wikipedia article. Does that count? I, I think it does, because I'm one who's very inclusive. Does that mean you're reading Wikipedia? You're reading about a woman who's on Wikipedia? If you only read a little short blurb about her on Twitter or Instagram, um, or, you know, we've got people who are making um, TikTok videos about some of our Wikipedia pages, all different kinds of pages. And... All of that, in my opinion, counts. You're just accessing Wikipedia in a different kind of way. And maybe you don't have the whole story, but maybe you come back later and pull a link. Um, I don't have all the answers to that. I don't think anyone does. Um, but I think it's worth exploring, and I think it's worth learning a little bit more. If you, How about if you use Siri or Alexa, and you ask a question, and it replies with an answer directly from Wikipedia? Is that a different, that's a different form of consumption than reading, but does it count? I think so. Right, right. And then it's, it's interesting, we, we have the session called Writing Women into Wiki History, but we're also talking about a whole range of other things, as you said, with Pinterest, with images, with Wikidata and voice assistants. So maybe next year's session will be about the broad range of impact beyond just writing because we're just getting started with this impact. Camelia, one last thought. Yeah, even for me, it's surprising because uh, what I see around me, it's, it's a lot of interest, a lot of interest uh, for women biographies. And uh, uh, people ask me and say me, look, this article is missing. This biography is missing in Italian. We have in English, we have in French, but we have not in Italian or even uh, they, uh, they said, look, is, uh, this article is not uh, well written as uh, on the uh, lead section is written that uh, was uh, the wife of some man is not, uh, is not no, no, notable because she's uh, the, the, the wife of that man. So uh, a lot of times uh, I, I go to change this uh, uh, this first of this uh, leading uh, section. And right now we have a discussion on Italian Wikipedia about this uh, a man we, which started the discussion saying it's time to finish this, uh, this way to, to write female biographies, which was, uh, uh, which was great because uh, let's remember what uh, Rosie said, that we are not addressing uh, women. We are addressing everybody because uh, women history is not uh, uh, only about history of women. It's about the history of the world. So uh, it's uh, something that uh, it's uh, up to us and it's important for all. I just want to add one quick thing because you reminded me of something, Camelia. Why are more women not writing on Wikipedia? My guess, because I've had a child, a young child, Andrew and I have kids the same age during the pandemic. I don't have enough time to do this in the evenings because guess what? All the stuff that's been waiting during the day is there. <laughs> so it's not easy as women to do this. We don't have the side time because unfortunately, um, we're still holding a lot of the household duties. So we can make these spaces very friendly. And I so appreciate all the work that all of us do for that, like real hard work to do that. But women don't have the time. You know, that's studied and researched. There are stats on this. So that's part of the issue. It's systemic. We certainly can make it easier for people. And we're going to keep trying to do that. Great. Well, thanks so much for the rich conversation. And we hope folks will get involved and take a look at Wiki Women in Red, Wiki Donna, and the efforts that we have out there.
So uh, thanks again for listening and uh, feel free to get in touch with any of us. Take care.